Hey everyone, I'm Kelly Yazdi, and today I am doing an interview with my friend, Sarah Schilke. Sarah, welcome to our Rust Brown Motorcycle Attorneys interview. We're so pleased to have you here. <laughs> Hi Kelly. Hi everyone. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. The whole idea behind these interviews was to talk to people in the motorcycle industry who've been around, you know, for some years who are really pioneers or they hold a unique mm -hmm. position or, you know, really just to inspire other people to get involved in the industry, to get involved mm -hmm. in motorcycles, you know, this thing that we absolutely all <laughs> love so much and share this passion with the community yeah. here at Russ Brown and worldwide. So thank you so much for being willing and wanting to come participate with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, of course. When I was putting my list together, Sarah, of like, who do I, who would I really love to interview? Like you were, of course, one of the top women because I've known you for years. And also you're such a source of inspiration for me personally. And I'm, I'm lucky because I've got to spend time with you, but <laughs> you're always bouncing all over the world. I feel like you'd always yeah. have so many things happening. So I'm really excited to just talk story with you and just hear about, you know, how you got into motorcycling and maybe that <laughs> place to start. Yeah, I got into motorcycling kind of on a whim when I was in college and without knowing anything about motorcycles or really having anyone to hold my hand. But luckily, mm -hmm. I was um, pushed in the direction of um, the MSF rider training program in Oregon at the time. And I quickly met some, you know, good mentors in motorcycling, which was which was difficult at the time because that was basically before the internet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it was like you would meet people just by seeing them and, and talking to them or reading motorcycle magazines and mailing into a club for information. Like I was a part of women on wheels. That was like a paper newsletter that I signed up for. And so, yeah, it was funny. So getting to know people was tough, but I found some really good people who helped me safely get into riding and the more I did uh the more just the more fun I had the more I learned about it the more fun I had and then I eventually became an instructor myself and then um started down my course of working in the motorcycle industry for my whole career so mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's been a lot <laughs> That's really cool to hear. I mean, because I think with with a lot of people's stories, right, with motorcycling, as we've come across, it's sometimes people grew up riding motorcycles, you know, riding dirt bikes, doing that mm -hmm. kind of thing in the yeah. woods or in the backyard, right? And then some of us didn't experience it till later in life. And I was very similar to you. It wasn't until I was, I think I was about 18 when I got my motorcycle license. It was like my 18th birthday present to myself. And <laughs> I had no idea that it could be a job, let alone like an industry, right? That right. Yeah. I could get in and work in, and especially as a woman too. And I feel like that's an important thing to mention is you just didn't really see it that often. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's it's really inspiring to just hear your story about how you got involved <laughs> with motorcycling and and to where you are now. I mean, that would be this is a perfect way to dovetail into my question where, are, what are you doing now? <laughs> I almost don't know where to start because there's so much that I've experienced in my lifetime, just in the industry itself. Um, and I would say that one of the first things that happened was um, at the time, a lot of the motorcycle industry was centered in Southern California. And so at one point I decided, you know, I'm going to move there and mm -hmm. see if I can you know, make it in the industry where, where it was centered. And so I moved down to California only knowing a few people through, like, I think I was in a listserv club at that point. So I met someone through that, but, um, um, but I worked in a dealership for a while while I was trying to figure things out. And I went to some event that I heard about, and that's where I met Genevieve Schmidt, who's the founder of women writers now um, dot com and she had started woman writer magazine which was a print publication back then and I met her at this event and I just thought she was really inspiring and a true pioneer mm -hmm. of women in motorcycling so I kind of kept in touch with her over the years and would see her at events and, and talk with her so that was fun and then in the meantime 
I did kind of work my way from the dealership into an electric motor bike company back in the early, early days in the 90s before battery technology was really where it needed to be. Um, and then I had a pretty long stint working in uh, advertising sales with the American Motorcyclist, the AMA magazine. Um, and I yeah, I worked at the uh, formerly known as the International Motorcycle Show Circuit for a while before I eventually landed um, at uh, Intersport Fashions West working on the Hein Gerica brand, which was fun for me because that was the first time I had been working in motorcycling and marketing for a German company. And I also have a strong foundation in German culture and language. Um, and so from there, I went on to kind of focus on that side of the marketplace. So that was uh, apparel. And then um, I moved on to helmets with uh, the Schubert company. And from there, I moved into motorcycles, working at BMW Motorrad. And then back in 2020, I um, worked with SW Motec to uh, help set up SW Motec USA. And that's where I still am today as my day job. Um, and then still actively involved in women writers now as kind of like my passion project. The wow. I mean, that's so cool. I should, really should have asked you the question, what haven't you done? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I mean that in the best way, because yeah. honestly, even knowing you as my friend, Sarah, it's, it's always cool to sit down and really talk story and just hear about like mm -hmm. all of these different positions that you've had, because you really have such a palette of experience in the motorcycle industry. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's, it's not only in, just incredibly inspirational, it's also very eye opening. You know, there's a lot of, I think part of what we're doing here with these interviews, right, is wanting to show people and show our communities. Like there's so many different ways that you can be involved depending on absolutely right. Mm -hmm. What you're passionate about, what your trade is, you know, mm -hmm. what it is that really gets you going in the morning or, you know, just the, I guess the versatility of the opportunities available. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there's just so much and, and it's um, fun to find your professional skills and abilities, and then unite that with a passion. That's always a, a fun way to go, <laughs> which yeah. I know you've done too, <laughs> very successfully. Yeah, thank you so much. It's um, it's It's been a journey and I feel like it's forever growing and going. And I just, I'm, I, I feel very, very grateful to be involved in it. And as I'm sure you do too, you know, it's really, it's really an amazing experience to be able to combine your passion with your purpose and mm -hmm. be able to do it for work, right? I like that. That's a great way to put it, combining your passion with your purpose. That's, mm -hmm. that's really yeah. <laughs> so with, with SW Mototech, like, can you tell us more about that? And then I'll ask mm -hmm. you about women writers now. Yeah. So um, SW Motec is a German company, and it's a global leader in the manufacture and production of um, premium motorcycle luggage, luggage carrier systems, protective parts like crash bars and skid plates, and ergonomic parts like bar risers and footrests and things like that. And um, yeah, we're just starting to begin growing pretty big here in the U.S. They're distributed mm -hmm. in 65 countries worldwide um, and pretty much have 25 years of experience and solutions for almost every segment, um, dual sport, ADV, sport mm -hmm. bikes, cafe racers, everything you name it for new bikes and older bikes. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a great place to shop for aftermarket parts for sure. Mm -hmm. That's really cool to hear. And now, now this is also exciting for me. I would love to ask you more about women riders. Now you had mentioned briefly about how you got involved in it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about it and you know, what your role is in it? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, I met Genevieve, um, and, uh, that was great. And we kept in touch over the years. She, one time in one of the print magazines, she did a little blurb about me, which, I still have the copy of it. I was so honored. And yeah. um, I contributed a couple articles with her um, to her originally as well. And back in 2006, she took the print publication um, online and made it womenwritersnow.com, which is what it is today. 
Um, and then about four years ago, I partnered up with Aaron Sills, the renowned um, <laughs> land speed racer who is also on our snowmobile trip. And um, so we're currently um, the co-chair women of womenridersnow.com and Genevieve's moved into more of an advisory role. Um, and so it's really exciting for us to, and, and for me especially, to continue her legacy and and mm -hmm. you know keep it keep it going and keep inspiring the new generation of of riders because motorcycling it just transcends generations and for me it's really exciting to see all of the new generation that are coming into it and with social media especially I just feel like women in motorcycling is really just just growing and it's so much more accessible now so that's all so really fun yes I 100% agree and I feel like oh I get I honestly get so excited about this I know you do too yeah <laughs> I'll try and rein it in but <laughs> what I think is so amazing about women writers now is that you really you're really seeing this platform right which has been around for many years now I mean it's not only just an editorial platform, right? You also are doing test rides. You also are doing gear reviews. You're doing, I mean, there's a lot of community outreach happening there. Mm -hmm. I see, you know, you guys are planning tours that are all around the world. I mean, like I said before, what don't you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do try to cover all of the bases for women riders from the female perspective. And we do actually have a lot of um, male subscribers as well to our newsletter um, because of, you know, bike review or a gear review and stuff, it is geared towards women, but, you know, maintenance tips. I mean, it's motorcycling information for everyone. So. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think even if it's, you know, if it's geared towards women, like we mentioned, I mean, so many of us riders, right. We don't just go out on rides with our girlfriends, right. Like we ride <laughs> yeah. Guys, we ride. I mean, there's just mm -hmm. such versatility in what kind of riding we do, when we do it, where we do it, with whom we do it. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's really incredible what you guys have really built, you know, with you and Aaron and Genevieve, of course, and just mm -hmm. really building this platform out. I mean, it's always been an incredible journey to watch what you guys do. And I'm always yeah. keeping tabs on like <laughs> doing what gear is coming out, you know? So yeah. Thank, thank you for all that you That's do on nice. that platform. It's really inspirational. Um, it makes me really happy to hear that you follow us and that you're such an enthusiast for us. That that means a lot. Um, I know that's sort of how we met each other too. And mm -hmm. I just wanted to also um, give a shout out to Trisha Zalitsky, our editor, because um, she's been in motorcycling as a moto journalist and a designer for a long time too. So she she's great on our force as well. And I, I think a lot of women out there know her mm -hmm. um and um she currently runs a motorcycle training site and so she contributes a lot of articles um that are great for new riders so we have a whole mm -hmm. new rider section um that we refer people to fairly often when they just ask us about well how do I get into motorcycling or like I need advice about this like we have quite a lot of um resources for that um because it's always Motorcycling is one of those things it's not easy to get into because there's there's so much to know and buying a motor vehicle is a lot. It's not like going out and buying a bicycle. So um so yeah, the new rider section is really great and then we profile a lot of women riders too. So it's a really interesting way to kind of get to know women who ride and the, the different ways that they participate in the sport and also the way motorcycling has affected their lives too. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was so eloquently said. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's, it's, I'm really glad that you brought that up as well, Sarah, because one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, you know, to anyone getting into motorcycling, what would be some advice that you have? And um, I'm glad that you mentioned just the resources that Women Riders now has, because I think you're absolutely right. It is, it is, it's a big industry, right? Mm -hmm. There's, and there's a lot going on in there, just like any yeah. other community or culture. And it can be very intimidating, right? To get involved in something like this, whether that's purchasing your new bike, knowing what gear to buy, where are you riding, opportunities mm -hmm. are available. So it's, 
and that's just scratches the surface, right? I mean, mm-hmm. Writers Now really has an incredible platform for these kinds of resources for people. But does anything else come to your mind for, you know, any advice for someone who wants to get into the motorcycle world? Yeah, I mean, I think um, starting out with rider training is the one of the most important things because um, mm-hmm. that will really help focus your basic skills on skills that are missing in riders who are involved in accidents, which is really important. Um, mm-hmm. And it's the basic skills that you fall back on and and grow from. So I always recommend starting out with like a T, uh, MSF class or some sort of professional training as opposed to learning whatever random skills your friends and you know, <laughs> family members have. Um, take the training together in or something like that. Um, and then the other thing um, on womenridersnow.com, one of the other things we have is we have a national calendar of women's events and a list of all of the women's motorcycling clubs um, nationwide and state and based on states um, that we've been able to compile. And so that's also a great resource to help um, women find mentors and other people to ride with. And like I was saying, that was a challenge when I was getting into it, but with the new technologies out there today, and there's so many new organizations for women. I know the lead is, is one that's international and they're very supportive of new riders. So um, that's an easy one to tap into and they're very active in social media. So um, I think finding a good network of uh, mentors and supportive writers is a, another good way to get into it and wear get a uh, good protective gear also because the the safer and more comfortable you are the more fun that you're going to have for a longer amount of time yes i couldn't agree more and that's a really great way to dovetail into my next question which is have you ever been in a motorcycle accident and if so what did you learn from it <laughs> I have um, been in knock on wood, one um, street bike accident where I, I slid out on some sand. So it's my fault, you know, um, and I've had plenty of get offs riding off road, which happens because trees jump out of nowhere and that kind of thing. But um, <laughs> I, I would say the learnings are um, to, you know, practice your skills and keep your skills sharp. So you're ready when something does come up, um, you know, wear the good protective gear, um, and then also be in a good, um, a good state of mind. So you're focused on, on what's going on and what's going on around you. Yes. That's, that's actually a really good one that I have not, I haven't heard. So it's so (laughs) good. (laughs) It's so, it's such a, obvious and simple one but it's really it's really so important right we all know accidents happen and that's why i mean thank goodness we have a resource like russ brown motorcycle Mm -hmm. attorneys right that's able to step in and they have an incredible roadside assistance program and Mm -hmm. so many other resources available for rider riders whether you're new rider a weekend warrior it's your daily commute you know it's Mm -hmm. it's a fantastic resource to have for people we're you know, you really can educate yourself a lot, right? Through, you know, learning from what happens in accidents, these Absolutely. possible, you know, situations. I mean, I certainly have. I know all of us at mm-hmm. various gatherings or shows or stuff, we we talk story about all of, you know, yeah. these kinds of things that have happened to us. And I think by talking about it, by sharing those stories, it helps us all become better writers and think more about things, right? Yeah. It's interesting that you said they provide uh, roadside assistance. I wasn't aware of that. And that, that is huge because for one thing, motorcycle batteries are much quirkier than car batteries. Mm -hmm. And um, also a lot of tow companies don't provide services for motorcycles. So you kind of have to know, like if you need roadside assistance, you have to know how to get it for a motorcycle. So that's a good tip from you. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Well, it's um, it's called the BAM program that Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys offers, and it's essentially riders helping other riders. And so 
Um, you know, whether you experience like a breakdown or a flat tire, or you even get into a motorcycle accident, you're able to tap into this program, which is totally free. The BAM program is 100% free roadside assistance and legal advice. And Russ Brown's um, basically riders helping riders program is there to help people get together. Um, <laughs> you know, I've, I've actually had an experience like this where I had a bike breakdown outside of Sturgis and I hit up the program and they were able to help actually help me find someone locally to help me come pick up a bike. Oh, that's and so, great. Yeah, it's just this fantastic <laughs> resource that it, it's actually been around for many years now, but mm-hmm. one of those things that like, it's really great to get out there because I think as motorcyclists, right, we all, we all get into challenges <laughs> here or there, whether it's bad weather, a breakdown. Something yeah. Else. I mean, it's yeah. like, the tale of old time it happens to all of us right it's not a matter of if it's more of just when and it's yeah how do we prepare ourselves for those situations that's a great way to put it Mm -hmm. for sure so i guess i would love to hear more do you have any other ongoings happening this year that you're looking forward to or things that are kind of in the works for you or something you're excited about yeah i mean um you brought it up earlier about womenwritersnow.com doing Um, tours. And that is definitely something I'm super excited about this year. Um, We haven't done an international tour in a couple years. And this um, September, October, we're doing, um, we're calling it the ladies first tour because there are some um, male partners who are coming, um, but it's focused on women riders um, in Spain and Portugal. Um, we saw. have a couple spots left. Yeah. And totally um, <laughs> so I am like super excited about that. And, and um, all, all of our crew is going Aaron, myself and Trisha. Um, so that's going to be really cool having the whole um, WRN crew there. Mm-hmm. Um, and anyone who's interested in an amazing adventure geared towards women, um, you can find out about it at womenridersnow.com. Oh, and I would also suggest, um, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter. So you're the first mm-hmm. to know about, um, you know, reviews and articles we have coming up as well as deals we have um, from our supporters. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Those are such great resources. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Do you, um, are there ways for people to get in touch with you? You know, anyone who's listening to this interview, who's been inspired or wants to reach out or, you know, of course, learn about more about women writers now is, is there any, what would be the best way to contact you? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm reachable at Sarah at womenwritersnow.com or on Instagram, Shilky Sarah at, <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, feel free to reach out. Um, I love getting involved with people, especially um, people new to the sport, because mm. that's one thing I found is it's, you get to relive that excitement of starting with every new writer that you meet. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. You and I share that same passion for (laughs) sure. It always really excites me. I hope it was the same for you with a new snowmobile writer. (laughs) A hundred percent. And honestly, I think that's one of the biggest joys I have about my job in particular, which is putting people into power sports, you know, and of course, (laughs) started as motorcycling, right? And um, it really just grew into power sports from there. But I always find that success for me is usually is usually derived from new me like people, people meeting new people through this Mm -hmm. passion they have for motorcycling and motorsports, but also seeing people who've never tried something before really try something new especially when it comes to you know motorcycles because you just you see this sense of freedom and empowerment and these things that we love about this sport so much but we we see someone else touch that and start to experience that and you know once you do it it's in your dna Mm -hmm. it doesn't ever leave you right (laughs) oh no like i can't wait to do it all again Yes, I I couldn't agree more. And that's why I always say it's for me, it's like passion meeting purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to, I think, share that with other people, you that only cultivates that joy within you even more. And then you see it 
grow this community with more incredible people. So it's a win-win situation. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> Sarah, seriously, it's such a delight getting to see you, my friend. And thank you, you for taking too. time today to catch up with me and Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. It's such a thrill to have you. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great thrill for me too. I'm always inspired by you and it's great to see your smiling face again. Thank you. And I will be reaching out because the Portugal trip, that sounds like exactly up my alley for sure. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It would be so fun to have you along for the ride. Thank you. All right. Well, we will be in touch and thank you again so much. It's really great to see you. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.